Okay, welcome back to my channel. This is Stage of Bliss. Got a little hair color this weekend. Um, getting ready for today's eclipse. So if you're tuning in before it happens, we are on the day of April 8th. Today is a solar eclipse in Aries in Western astrology. Um, it's going to be a big one. We're already in the beautiful energy that we've been in since the lunar eclipse two weeks ago. So we're in this beautiful energy. We've got this eclipse conjuncting Chiron. So wondering how your weekend went. My weekend, I was aware that we were coming into this Chiron and really wanting to look at what wounds had not been addressed for me. So that was the focus of my yesterday. And if you haven't had an opportunity to do that, or you haven't had an opportunity to notice what wounds have been triggered for you over the past, especially couple of days, but maybe week, or maybe going on from today forward, because remember the eclipse is less like a six month and beyond, right? But like you're working with the energy of these eclipses throughout the six months. And um, this is really an 18 month eclipse cycle on the Aries Libra axis. So we are dealing with this relationship stuff ongoing. Um, so wounds around relationships is, and around the person, the self is gonna be the biggest stuff. So this is also going to allow for purging from your psychic centers anywhere where you've been holding those wounds, right? So it could be anywhere along the spine, any one of the major centers that could be holding memories or programming around certain wounds, around self and other, relationship with self, relationship with other, how others see you, how you see yourself. Um, so when that stuff comes up, see it as blessed, see it as a gift from the eclipse and know that the point of this is to clear us out, is to help us become more aligned and more clear so that we can be living our, uh, our dharmic path, our mission, our north node. Eclipses are really tied to the nodes. Um, so your north node, south node is being triggered by the eclipses. So for me, that's um, actually the Aries Libra uh, axis for me. So this is a particularly strong one for me. Um, but anywhere you slice it, Aries Libra is hitting everybody in that uh, relationship quadrant, no matter if that's where you have your nodes or not. But this last eclipse we went through, the lunar eclipse, um, was hitting us in a lot like a karmic way. So um, the south node has a lot to do with where we came from or what was most natural or what things we've been working out in the past karmically. And why eclipses have always been seen in the Hindu and Indian yogic tradition as so potent, like times a thousand to do your spiritual work because now we're working on moving from karma to dharma. We have this like psychic bridge the eclipse that's helping propel us out of our karmic debris into our dharmic life. So anything we can do today that's our spiritual sadhana, our spiritual practice, remember is amplified by a thousand right now. So even if we just do like 10 chants of something, we have done 10,000 chants, okay? So let's just together for the sake of that, and if you don't know which practices to do, I like just to begin with Ganesha mantras because Ganesha is removing obstacles. That is the first chakra ruler. So that's the aspect within us that knows how to remove obstacles. The part of our God consciousness is referred to as Ganesha in Sanskrit, is depicted as an elephant. Elephants are wise, they remember, um, they're strong. Uh, if you read my article on basmani.com, Hindu gods and goddesses within, I have um, one on Ganesha. If you want to look at it, like these aren't really about like beings outside of us and, a, a, you know, polytheism or whatever. These are about qualities in us. So you can tune in with the Ganesha mudra to your root chakra. Ganesha Om, Ganesha Om is just a really simple chant. So we just did a thousand of those, right? Ganesha Om, Ganesha Om. We just did 2,000. Ganesha Om, Ganesha Om. We just did 3,000. 
or if you like a little bit different Ganesha mantra, Om Gam Ganapataye Namaha. Om Gam Ganapataye Namaha. Om Gam Ganapataye Namaha. I like to do three. Gum is a seed mantra for Ganesha, for that energy of removing obstacles. Ganapataye is another term meaning the same. Namaha in the name of. So Om, we're tuning into the frequency of our root, our ability to see through the obstacles. Really important during an eclipse, right? To like move the obstacles, get to the wound, to find the pathway. Um, I was just watching Rewilding with Support. Brina, she has a great channel, um, like kind of bouncing off of her a little bit uh, because she was really inspiring. But she was talking about a practice at the end of her eclipse video today of imagining that you are aligned with your path and this lightning bolt coming in from the eclipse and just carrying you right down your path. I thought that was so powerful. So yeah, there is just a very electrifying energy to this eclipse, right? So after Ganesha, I would do personally uh, the Shanti Mantra because it's asking to remove, you know, exchange ignorance for knowledge and wisdom. Exchange the darkness for the light of understanding, which we're doing as the sun is eclipsed and then it is removed. Um, exchange poison for nectar in my life. So anything that's been poisonous to you, a relationship, a job, um, a health situation, state of mind, things you've told yourself. This mantra helps that to shift. And it normally does take about 26,000 repetitions of a mantra to really start to build that energy up. So that's why it's recommended to do a mala a day. So it can take some time to build up 108, you know, like a 40 day practice will usually get you there. Sorry, I've got like a weird hair here. But today, if you want to have 26,000, you only have to do 26 times of a mantra, which is amazing. So if you do a whole mala, you actually are building up huge boons. Um, I will do this mantra for you three times. So that will give us 3,000 um, potent amplifying of the Shanti mantra. And you can replay this, you know, like seven times if you want to amp it up or eight times. So with awareness in the third eye center, Om Sahana Vavatu Sahano Punaktu Sahaviryam Karavavahe Tejasvina Vadhitamastu Mavit Vishavahe Om Shanti 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 Again Om Sahana Vavatu Sahano Punatu Sahaviryam Karavavahe Tejasvina Vadhitamastu Mavit Vishavahe Om Shanti 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 Om Sahana Vavatu Sahano Punatu Sahaviryam Karavavahe Tejasvina Vadhitamastu Mavit Vishavahe Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Hari Om Woo! And then we can look at something great to work with during this time. And I highly recommend doing um, any mantra practice today, but especially for specific issues. So let's say we want to uh, unravel ancestral and karmic debris from the DNA. Um, so the DNA is where we're carrying information as light. So when we do Nam Myo Ho Renge Kyo, this is a Tibetan Buddhist mantra that helps to unravel that and reveal your dharmic intelligence, right? What you really came here to do. So, nam myo ho renge kyo. Let's do 10 of these. These are fast. Nam myo ho renge kyo. 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 
Nam yo ho renge kyo, 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 nam yo ho renge kyo. We just did 10,000 of those. Do that again. You got 20,000. Do that again. You hit over the marker for that first level of the spiritual gifts that come, which, which is a propulsion, again, getting on that lightning bolt and flying, right? So in our chakra system, especially our second chakra and probably our heart chakra too, with relationships, uh, we carry karmic debris from past relationships. Also, you know, first and second, those root, safety, security, satisfaction, sexual connection, the love stuff. So in this eclipse energy, we are trying to move out, purge out, heal the wounds in these psychic centers. So I'm just going to give you a couple of really quick practices to do to assist that today. One is a Mula Banda lock. You just simply pull up the perineum, clench, and release. Pull up the perineum, clench it, breathe in, release. To add one more little thing to that, pull up the perineum, take your tongue, touch the roof of your mouth, look at the third eye center, hold it in, release. And if you want to do that with the word gum, Remember the seed mantra for Ganesha? Gum. Or you can use lam, the seed mantra for the root. So that's one practice. A second practice you can do is Vajrasana with Vajrapani Mudra. So you're sitting up on your knees. I'm just going to show here. You're sitting up on your knees. You don't have to be up on your toes. You can be down like this. Just simple, simple. And you're just going to now use the muscles that would stop the floor, flow of urine. So you're imagining you're peeing and you're stopping. You're peeing, you're stopping. So for some of you, this is going to feel really similar to your Mula Banda lock because if you don't have uh, attunement with that psychic center, we usually use a Kegel muscle exercise to attune you to that, but they're actually two different zones. So this one is just... Uh, clenching, releasing, clenching, releasing, and you can kind of feel a little wave go down over the bottom. This is helping move energy also in the second center, in your sexual center, and help moving that energy up the spine. The Vajrapani, the Vajrasana is the lightning pulp position and is helping you access that energy in your spine and even to, you know, move sexual energy up the spine. That can be really helpful. That also means it can help move blocked energy there as well. So you can do the same thing where you clench that in, breathe in, up your spine, gaze to the forehead, tongue to the roof of your mouth, hold. And if you want to use um, the VAM, sorry, I'm like, what is it? VAM for the second chakra, VAM, 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 while you're doing that, that's even more potentized. Um, then for the heart chakra, let's just do, um, first of all, tapping. So this is your third practice here, tapping around the heart. And the, the sound is yum, 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 yum. Think of yummy, yum, yum, yum. And now a little just quick shadow work to like round this off. Um, because this is working with Chiron, because this can be a sticky deep one, fill into your heart space after you do a little chanting, fill into your heart space and fill like, what is my deepest heart wound? What is my deepest heart wound? And maybe you want to journal about this. What is my deepest heart wound in relationship with love? write it down. What At what points in my life, like maybe you feel like it's um, rejection. Maybe you feel like it's jealousy. Maybe you feel like it's discouragement or uh, whatever you feel like it is. Write it down and then try to find some points in time that you feel like these were kind of cemented in for you. When this happened, when this happened, when this happened. 
And then you might find that there's actually a different feeling behind that, another emotion, a secondary emotion. If you felt like it was rejection and you find some points of rejection, what's behind rejection? So what's behind rejection could be a different emotion, right? Could be a different feeling like, um, could be humiliation, could be um, self-consciousness, right? Could be uh, self-doubt. Um, so when you do this again, are these the same moments in time or are there different moments in time where those were cemented in for you? And, you know, I encourage you to feel into these, feel those emotions coming up around that. And the shadow work is, can I love these moments, these parts of me too? Can I love these parts of me too? These parts of me are also lovable. And if you're having a hard time with that, you can use the yum. You can also use Pono today. That's so powerful it's to fill into those parts. I'm sorry, please forgive me. I love you. Thank you to that part of yourself because those moments were teachers. They were wisdom granters. So filling into that, loving that part of you too, and if possible, even go to another layer. Is there something even behind this secondary emotion? Is there something behind that? And generally at this point, these are self-worth issues. These are feeling worthy or enough. And if we can get to that level and we can find the parts of us that didn't feel worthy or didn't feel like enough, and love those on this day, in this energy, even through this week, and even through the six months, if you're not watching this today, this is a potent energy to get into, to love about self, do a little Ho'oponopono, and to work with the mantras of the heart. Also, Om Mani Padme Hum is a great one to do with the heart to help move this energy. And remember, all the work you do under this eclipse today, multiplied by a thousand. So get on out there and maybe do some sun salutations, maybe meditate for even five minutes today will be like 5,000 minutes. You could really make some huge leaps and bounds towards your destiny. This, this is, the nodes are called the nodes of fate for no small thing. Like we are aligning with destiny more and more on these eclipses than ever before in our life. So really harness this. If you need assistance, please reach out. I'm going to be in it today. Um, if you're interested in some potent Chiron master healer, master tonic eclipse juju, it's going to be ready on the full moon. Uh, let me know. I'm just going to have a limited supply of those. Really good to knock out any... Um, stuff you're working with emotionally, physically. I make no medical claims, but it is a beautiful, like delicious energy that's coming through. All right. We'll see you tomorrow. Much love to you. Namaste. I do love you. Thank you for being here. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share it. We'll see you tomorrow.